people live in different time zones. But not just in the physical sense. Their minds and hearts can live in different eras, different centuries, or even a different universe. There is always a time difference between people and within people. Time difference. Once upon a time, in the small town of Batsaran, Mongolia, a huge sandstorm occurred. It was 1988, 800 kilometers away from the capital city of Mongolia. That storm occurred in another century, the 20th century. At that time, Mongolia was under the socialist regime. It was the completely different time zone than today. During the repression of the 1930s, Socialists killed about 30,000 Buddhist lamas and destroyed over 700 temples in Mongolia. One of the ruins was near Zaya's block in the center of the town of Batsaran. Mysterious, scary, the kids named it Black House and believed that the Black House was haunted. Zaya's mother used to scold him by saying that she would lock him in the Black House if he kept making trouble. But in a very strange way, the scary black house was quite serendipitously demolished by that sandstorm. Religion was strictly prohibited during socialism. Therefore, especially as a kid, Zaya had never seen Buddhist scripts and images. It was only two years ago that the democratic revolution gave people the right to practice religion. When Zaya was small, he was a very mercurial, nimble, active and unstable kid. He was always running and jumping. Who knows what he was up to or where he was. He would never just walk in calmly. He would always jump. I didn't pay much attention to Zaya's talent in drawing and never really thought about cultivating his skills or anything like that. We had five boys after all. I would often just rush off to do my job. I was a workaholic. The images of dark demons he saw in his findings from the demolished black house had truly touched the boy's soul. How can they have so many arms and legs? Why are their canines so big and menacing? Some of them even have three or four heads. These images were so bizarre and weird, the boy was truly astonished and became obsessed with drawing them. But for his father, <laughs> the principal of the only school in town, what Zaya was doing was unbearable and stood in direct contradiction to his communist ideology. Zaya's father used to draw. He had many talents, in fact. He could play music, sing songs, draw paintings, write beautiful scripts. You know, during the socialist era, there was a need to create many propagandist posters, flyers, etc. And he used to write and design them all. He was pretty well known, not only in our town, but in the whole province. He even directed stage plays in the theater. He was a very persuasive lector. At that time, it was called party agitator. I would joke with my kids, none of you inherited your father's talents. Only Zaya has a bit of his talent in drawing. To make it up to his father, the boy spent the whole night drawing the white Tara goddess. He proudly hung it on the wall across from his father's bed and went to sleep at the break of dawn. When his father awoke in the morning, he saw the painting and cried out. Oh, 
I have experienced life in two different societies. Even though I was a kid during the socialist uh, regime, I grew up in, in a fully experienced that area. Then I witnessed the collapse of that system in the transition to democracy. It is the completely different time zone. All non-socialist histories, including the history of the Mongolian Empire and the great Genghis Khan, were prohibited from study or even simple discussion during the socialist era. Such subjects were only enabled by the democratic revolution in 1990. After the democratic revolution, when I was already in my 20s, I learned about Mongolian history without a lens of socialist propaganda for the first time in my life. To my generation, it was like a foreigner studying Mongolian history for the first time in his life. It brought such a delicate and sad feeling like, you know, an orphan who had grown up in a foreign land and learning of and meeting his birth parents for the first time as an adult. That feeling brought me to another time zone in which I felt unique desire to draw our own country, to learn more about this aspect of Mongolia and to become a closer to my origins. I realized that, that this was what made me to difference from anyone else. When I met him, I could have said that Zaya was a historical painter who used modern techniques to create a very fresh take on the history of, of, of the greatness of, of Mongolia. His early work is very much about Mongolia, Mongolia's culture, Mongolia's history, Mongolia's present. Um, his work was telling us a story that was even less known in Mongolia. He, he often tells us these historical stories from the point of view of women, where we tend to hear the story from the point of view of the warriors and the conquerors. Um, we get to see, experience Mongolian history through his women. And that is refreshing uh, in a sense, but it's also, you know, it, it's, it's quite important. Going back to the socialist time zone, it was so symbolic that the scary black house, which used to frighten Zaya when he was a boy, stored such unique and priceless treasures that he had been searching for. Zaya needed to find out what story was hidden in those strange scripts, written on his findings. He wanted to learn that script. When he heard that only lamas knew that script, Zaya decided to become a monk at the age of 15. parents didn't approve, so Zaya escaped on his way to a summer camp. It 
it was a different town in which an old llama lived. At that time, the old man was the only one near Zaya's hometown who knew the Tibetan script. It seems like around then I started giving up. Uh, it was the first time in my life I was away from my home for a long period of time. Plus, I started, moreover, I had to sit for a long time learning and reading Tibet, Tibetan books that I barely understood. I was a very impatient kid. Um, for whatever reason, the thought that I should give up into it my head, it turned out that I was more and, uh, interested in paintings. As a small country, there was only one fine arts college that was owned by the socialist state. As it was the country's only art school, the competition was high. Zaya couldn't make it. You know what, I feel so jealous and uh, competitive and pre prepared for the following year's entrance exam for a whole year. Passing the exam, moving to Lombardor City, along at the age of 17. Free from his parents' control, Zaya went wild in the big city. Perhaps he couldn't adapt quickly enough to the new environment. Eight months after his entrance into the art college, he got into a fight with some teenagers, got into trouble, and was expelled. Zaya's father had just gotten diagnosed with liver cancer and became very ill at the time. Zaya didn't have the guts to tell his father of the expulsion in that difficult and sincere time. He lied he was still going to school. In truth, he had been expelled from the dorm, as well as the school, and had become homeless. The most hurtful feeling is hurt the feeling of your beloved ones, uh, living against their desires and wishes like hell. The judgment coming from your beloved ones is the most heavy and horrible. Zaya is someone who is in touch with himself, but who is also in conflict with himself. I have a belief that two different personalities live in inside of one person, in the inner person, in the outer person. I think even as a child, I knew that uh, sometime someone different existed inside me. That the uh, inner person is uh, your, I think your true self. The other person is more like a pretender. He's more uh, volatile and, and multiple and too kind, like a prostitute. It can even take on an evil side, but with the time, the true inner personality develops and grows more and guides the other. A human uh, will feel dilemma feel both good and bad feelings. He can feel both love and hatred, positive and negative. In other words, humans are truly, I think, psycho animals. After a year of being schoolless and homeless, Zaya enrolled in the first private art school of Mongolia. Through the impact of the democratic revolution, lots of private schools were established at that time like mushrooms sprouting after the rain. It was winter, with temperatures of minus 20 to minus 40 degrees C. And there I was in the middle of that, a student with no place to live, in a fight for survival. The newly opened private schools couldn't afford to provide dorms for their students. Zaya's classmate, ended up helping him by offering to let him stay at his summer hut. It did little to shield him from the freezing cold. At that time, 
there was a massive food shortage in Mongolia. The Russians had cut off its subsidiaries to the state budget fund right after the democratic revolution in Mongolia. So the whole economy quickly collapsed. The convenience stores had become barren. As a boy from the countryside, I was coming to the city with nothing but the dream to become an artist and draw. But remember, what kind of life we lived at the time where we saw a pool. During the difficult time, I was the student. It was really hard to continue with my dream of becoming an artist. Zaya did not have much to eat. He used to live on boiled noodles. The little hut was infested with rats. Since everyone was struggling financially, there was no one who would buy paintings in Mongolia. I think in the art students, my time, try to make some money by pestering foreign tourists. We used to call it going to hunt, you know, like hunting. Holding our portfolios, we stood in front of in the Gandan Monastery in the, in the summers. Even the renowned, the talented, very famous artists from socialist area stood among us, trying to put their bread on their tables. One day, Zaya encountered a German tourist it turned out that he'd been researching shamanism and had written a book, but was still looking for something to put on the cover of the book. During the socialist period, there was no knowledge about religion and shamanism. Since 1937, it had been over 50 years since it was prohibited. When Zaya accepted the German tourist's request, he had no source material from which to look up shamans, nor anyone to advise him, so he ended up mostly drawing from his own imagination. Zaya is an artist who exceeds your expectations at every chance he gets. Zaya is an artist that is continually striving to explore new themes and to paint in new ways. Zaya is an artist that is not bound. It's an artist that you can't box. Zaya is an artist that um, defies definition with every show of his work. Drawing is like a voyage to be a real journey. Of course, we must visit new places and explore new territories. The journey will also carry risk. So there is a crucial need for new methods of creating new ways of thinking and new inventions. This is what uh, makes a journey into true adventure. It's boring to be visit the same old places over and over again. Besides having great skill or execution, a great artist should have the ability to use their heart and mind to create something that inspires, awes and moves people. In other words, great art is born in the artist's feelings and thoughts. The few who can create art like that are remembered as truly great artists. And Zaya is one of them. I drew a piece called Octobus Lady, or perhaps it's, it was called Madame Octobus. It ended up being experiment for me. I had the option to drew an uh, ordinary Mongolian woman with fat, red cheeks. But in the process, I faced 
some internal conflict. What to do? I had a sudden desire to draw a mixed mutant. Uh, culture itself is a fusion and mix. The world is flat now. The standard of beauty can mix and mutate as well. So I experimented and the result was beyond my expectations. I feel like uh, I had to become a surgeon and, what, and that I had just conducted plastic surgery. It seems like a progress uh, continued in that way. Uh, constantly uh, transforming. To the early 90s, people still didn't have much trust in private schools. It was the case with Zaya's parents. Zaya had to keep lying about his expulsion from the state college to his ill father in order to protect his feelings in the last days of his life. Zaya's father died in 1996. Zaya felt so guilty when his father died, believing that his son had graduated from the State Art College. Zaya needed to turn his lie into truth. So, Zaya graduated from the State University of Arts and Culture in 2002, specializing in Mongolian iconometric painting. There is a theory of Mongolian traditional painting. This method is particularly used in drawing images of gods. That method is the most common traditional standard method in English. It's uh, called it symmetric composition when everything is divided into equal parts. The theory of flatness, which I learned in school, has a strong influence in my works. The Mongolian school imprinted in my mind the ability to see and portray object in flatness yet and 3D. This means the abstract thinking become much easy for me. There are many artists now who follow Zaya's style of painting. You can say that Zaya has already created his own school of art with his own methods. His school has become a brand now, and brands always create trends. Zaya left Mongolia 17 years ago. He lived in many different countries, including some European countries and the United States. He met his wife while he was living in the States. The young couple then moved to Japan and settled there. I, I don't think he can live in the same time zone as, as most of us. Um, and there are multiple reasons for that. First of all, he does not live in Mongolia. He lives in Japan. And just that alone gives you a perspective that is different from what most people in Mongolia would see. Even though it's the, you know, the same general continent, um, it's a very different culture, very different histories, and, and, and many different, very different things that bring them together. But he speaks Mongolian, and he speaks English, and he speaks Japanese, and he even some Spanish. Um, all of these things are continually active within him. And when you think in different languages, you think differently. 
he needs to be in different time zones in order for him to have a vantage point where we can see where he has been, where he is, and where he wants to be. Can't do that if you're in a little box. Um, and if you see things, it's the same way everybody does. Zaya is able to see things affecting Mongolia from a very different perspective. Um, he is also able to see the way that Japan is from a very different perspective. So his work is equally critical and it gets you thinking equally whether you're a Mongolian looking at his, uh, at his works or a, or a Western uh, Canadian looking at his work or a Japanese person looking at the work he's making in Japan, right? It is simply not what the, you know, what, what, what normal time, right? Uh, using your metaphor, not what normal time would allow. The more things he saw outside, the more he developed. The more he learned, the more he leveraged. Not only had he done so, but Mongol painting methods had evolved a lot as well. Of course, wherever he traveled, there was always a different culture, different art and different methods. Some of their cultural history goes back millions of years. Zaya is a great example of how Mongolian art can evolve and be adapted to a globalized modern world. It is hard to conceive the initial idea, but when you already started, the consequently the idea will flow in, into your mind. Uh, of course, the final result is unpredictable. Every piece carries its emotion. Uh, the emotions are judged by your life experience, knowledge and mentality. Sometimes I get swayed away by my emotion. In that case, the result is far different from what I had been expecting. But there are many times where I scrapped everything, started over in completely, totally different piece. Creating art for me is not simply painting something on a flat canvas. It is finding yourself in the canvas, you have to create yourself. Then as you have found it, you must destroy it. You must able to destroy as you are able to create. So this is the very unusual process. I think it is that struggle that allows him to paint music with his brush to tell us a story in silence, to make us want to be in the painting, to almost hear the children's laughter, to almost, you know, join the dancers dance, um, to hear the music playing in the instruments of these women on stage or in groups. It is really quite something that you feel you're almost inside the painting itself. Um, that is the uniqueness of Saya. The styles, the colors, the textures, all of these things come together and they lure you into this 
universe, into this, this world. And, um, and you feel like you're part of the work too. I get the inspiration of paintings from uh, uh, anything. For example, I spent two years thinking about the piece called Clouds, but I only spent uh, one month to paint it. Some ideas are born from nowhere. All of my favorite good pieces are different from their initial ideas. Those pieces are unique. I don't care if people won't like it. It doesn't even matter what I want to express through these works. The most important part is the adventure that led to its creation. In the 10 years that I've worked the, with, with Zaya, I have seen a, con a constant evolution with materials, textures and colors, techniques and themes um, that he is never static. He is, he is always working. And it's, it's like, like this machinery in, inside his head that keeps working on different combinations and, and um, like, like musical notes or words or sentences, you know, it's, 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 it's a visual poetry that drains him. Um, he paints with such intensity to such detail and often in a very large scale um, that uh, it's, it's, it's like an uphill battle, like an uphill fight. Everything I see is reflected in my paintings. So life itself is my creative inspiration. I try to see every beautiful and nice moment of life. There are, of course, uh, unpleasant and sad, dramatic and undramatic moments as well. Other art, culture, places like music and uh, so on, all inspires me. Without such uh, sources of uh, inspiration, uh, I think we couldn't draw or paint anything. I myself am an artist. I have set up several exhibitions. I have also visited many art exhibitions by other artists. But in Zaya's exhibitions, most of the audience is composed of families with kids, lovers, friends in love and so on that come and fill up the halls. That's quite rare. People just fall in love with his paintings. They are somehow magnetized to them like magic. It seems like his art emanates love to the audience. Why can't a person express his love uh, toward others through paintings? Uh, that's all I have to give. I guess I'm ugly and short, maybe mangy. I used to tease kids when I was young. That's why I'm, I don't have many friends. If I give someone a nickname, eventually everyone starts calling him by nickname and forget his uh, real name. I might have had eyes like gimlet even when I was a child. So I needed to express it. That's why I might have been teasing everyone around. Of course, uh, I have changed it now. I don't do it actually. But so, I think I generally only tease myself now.
Once upon a time, Zaya's maternal uncle came to visit his home. There were red mountains nearby, a long mountain range for a small child. It was impossible to see what was behind those mountains. As Zaya was a tremendously curious kid, he asked his uncle once, a nine-year-old boy started a journey to see the water that was located at the end of the world. It was a big mountain. After walking a whole day, Zaya finally reached the peak and had grown very tired and hungry. Behind the bigger mountains, there was a vast steppe, with a much bigger mountain range cutting through it. It left a huge memory of disappointment, as well as a lesson that at the top of the mountain, there is always another mountain. I'm blown away, really. Um, it's exciting to see all the new things that he's exploring. He's throwing up different techniques and colors up on the same canvas. He is, he is taking new chances. And he is looking at things uh, differently. I mean, there is humor, there's tenderness, there's tension, both negative and positive. There's fear, there's, there's, there's stuff I don't understand, and I love that. There's stuff I don't understand that I don't have the answers to and I keep going back to the canvas. I keep going back to the paintings over and over again. And I think that when a painting gets you to do that, that is a masterwork. And Zaya, I don't want to say that he's maturing as an artist because, because he's already at that level, but he is doing this in such a masterful way. I decide what color to use almost as if I am commanding them. As I get bored easily, I try not to use the same colors again and again. It feels like it must always be different. For his second exhibition, he used several different methods in his paintings, especially in the modern pop art style. If you saw them without knowing who the artist is, you probably wouldn't recognize that they were his works. So Zaya is a really unpredictable artist. There's a humorous element. I mean, I'm so glad to see Frida Kahlo, you know, and dressed in, in, in traditional Mongolian costume, which is, I think is awesome. Um, but uh, she's holding a baby, right? She's holding a baby in a Mongolian uh, costume as well. In this painting, I see less of um, a politically correct or politically incorrect piece and more something that is trying to cross boundaries and that is trying to highlight our shared humanity outside of a culture or nationality or a political border. Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't have words to say that uh, will justify my uh, actions. Maybe now I'm in the process of creating myself. As the time goes on, a person starts to hold himself to higher standards. But after 10 years, I think, why, I, why was I so strict to myself? I was so young and beautiful and said thoughts come to my mind. The Mongolian art and lifestyle closely 
resemble this feeling. The nomadic way of life that we all have lived, each have their own unique form, scent and soul. People live in different time zones, but not just in the physical sense. Their minds and hearts can live in different eras, different centuries, or even a different universe. There is always a time difference between people and within people.